Good evening, and welcome to the 46th USC Latino Alumni Association Gala. It is my pleasure to welcome the over 500 Trojans and friends joining us this evening from across the country on the event platform and all the others joining us via the live stream. The past year presented us all with many unprecedented challenges, and our hope is that you and your loved ones are in good health tonight. Since 1973, the USC Latino Alumni Association has impacted over 9,100 students and awarded over $21 million to undergraduate and graduate students at USC. Tonight, we celebrate the impact that each and every one of you makes by investing in our scholars. Your support helps propel deserving students, allows them to follow their dreams and make their mark in the world. I wanna express my deep gratitude the needs of our students were magnified due to COVID, and because of your support, we were able to award approximately $825,000 in 267 scholarships this academic year. This is on par with what we award other years. This is definitely a testament of the Trojan family support and friends. We have a wonderful evening planned today. The Hubbard nominees will share how you have impacted their lives and the incredible things they are already doing. I think you're gonna be impressed. We will also celebrate the incredible Michael Felix for his contributions and accomplishments um, at USC and beyond. And I wanna thank um, first and foremost, our presenting sponsor, Entrevision and KXLA Television 44, and each and every one of you for your support again tonight. Thank you for joining us. And now please join me in welcoming Patrick Auerbach, Associate Senior Vice President for Alumni Relations. Enjoy your evening. Thank you, Mercy. And good evening to everyone joining us for one of my favorite nights of the year, the annual USC Latino Alumni Association Scholarship Gala. Before going any further, I want to acknowledge the extraordinary work that Mercy and her team of Dolores Sotelo, Isabella Ronda, Vivian Sampson, what they do each and every day, alongside our community of fantastic alumni volunteers to keep the USC LAA as our nation's foremost Latino Alumni Association. And a special acknowledgement to Mercy, who is not only finishing up her fifth year already as the executive director of the LAA, but who also recently defended her dissertation at USC's Russier School of Education. Soon, Mercy herself will be a USC alumna and will be known as Dr. Mercy Willard. Congratulations and felicidades. I would also like to recognize the LAA Board of Directors, the LAA Corporate Advisory Council, and the many members of the USC Alumni Association Board of Governors and other volunteer groups across USC who got their very start with USC volunteerism by way of the Latino Alumni Association and its predecessor, the Mexican American Alumni Association. A special shout out to current LAA Board of Directors, President Ismael Bautista, and to LAA Corporate Advisory Council Chair, Carmen Herrera, for their steadfast leadership. And our gracious thanks once again to Ron and Walter Ulloa for their once again generous support as presenting sponsor for tonight, and to USC trustee and former LAA and USC Alumni Association board member, Carmen Nava, and her husband, Robert, for their generous match challenge lead donation tonight. This evening, we celebrate the continuing accomplishments of our Latino Trojan family by honoring two very special Trojans, Michael Felix as our legacy honoree and the Dr. John R. Hubbard Award winner who will be announced later in this evening's program. While we don't yet know who the Hubbard Award winner is, I would like to say now that it fills my heart to see Michael Felix being honored. He is one of the most humble and authentic people I've ever met, not just at SC, but anywhere. USC is blessed to have him and Debbie and their whole familia as part of our, of our entire Trojan family, but more on Michael later too. Each year, even in virtual times, the Latino Alumni Association continues to strengthen our Trojan family by bringing alumni and community supporters together to raise and award vital scholarship funds to hundreds of deserving students and to provide mentorship, advisement and leadership to both our students and to fellow Trojan alumni. For almost five decades, the LAA as an organization and the MAAA before it, and as a community have epitomized the five traits of a Trojan, faithful, scholarly, skillful, courageous, and ambitious. As the university continues to work towards a bright future under the leadership of Dr. Carol Folt, 
the LAA continues to flourish and pursue excellence in all that it does. The LAA, like our great university, is constantly working to become a better version of itself. And for that, we should all be so very proud. So on behalf of more than 437,000 alumni around the world, thank you to the LAA for all you do. And we hope you enjoy this wonderful evening. It now gives me great pleasure to introduce this year's gala chair and tonight's MC, a dedicated Trojan who serves on the LAA Board of Directors and has also volunteered his time to enhance alumni programs across the university. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Saul Alvarado. Thank you, Patrick, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is my pleasure to be with you here this evening. Tonight, we celebrate the impact that Latino USC students are making in the world. You will meet a few who will share what your support has enabled them to do in their respective field of study. But before we go any further, I want to ask that you please tag at USC LAA on social media platforms and use tonight's hashtag, hashtag USC LAA impact. Our scholars encompass many backgrounds and majors. Think about the exponential impact that you are enabling with your support. Over 9,100 scholars have entered the workforce and are contributing to advances in health, research, business, policy, engineering, and the arts, amongst many other ways. As the current USC LAA Board Vice Chair and this year's Gala Chair, I have met many scholars who have shared their stories with me and what the LAA scholarship means to them. Inspiring stories such as being able to focus on their studies instead of worrying on coming up with money to pay for their tuition. That their conversations with alumni have led them to find men a mentor or an internship. Or that they felt encouraged because as first generation college students, the USC LAA was somewhere they could turn to for help. I became involved because of stories such as the ones I just shared with you. However, the one story with a common theme that was absolutely unacceptable to me was hearing bright, intelligent young men and women share with me of not having enough financial support to attend or even stay at USC to continue their start studies. A story I intimately know very well because I was one of those students during my time at USC. I now see it as my duty and my purpose to give of my time, energy, resources, to help the next generation of Trojans complete their studies at USC and fulfill their dreams. So tonight, we honor an extraordinary alumnus with the Legacy Award for Achievements and Philanthropic Support and a student with the Dr. John R. Hubbard Award. The student receiving this award is a senior who will receive their undergraduate degree this year. So throughout the evening, we will view videos of this year's Hubbard Award finalists uh, but for now, let's meet our first student finalist. I was born and raised in Santa Clarita, California. At a very young age, I became infatuated with the idea of attending USC. When my sister was diagnosed with a malignant brain tumor at the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles, many of the physicians who would save my sister's life would wear USC-affiliated clothing articles. And ever since this experience, USC had become my dream school. You know, when he gave me his CV or resume, he just comes out of the paper and three-dimensionally, and he comes alive for you. So you don't really need to see him in action to know that he's very exceptional that he will do great things. My proudest accomplishment would have to be establishing the Kidney Disease Screening and Awareness Program at USC, KDSAP for short. USC KDSAP is an organization that is dedicated to raising awareness of chronic kidney disease through free health screenings and health education events in Los Angeles. He is a first generation student and as a first generation, we know it is always a little bit harder. So Jorge is not the type of person that would say, well, I had to figure it out on my own, so you should too. No, you know, I had to figure it out on my own, so let me help you, so you don't have to do that. During my second year at USC, I established the Los Angeles Diversity Career Conference, which became the annual signature event of my fraternity. 
The reason I established LADCC is because many minority students are unaware of the pre-professional development programs that can help them improve their resume as well as help them find internships and eventually full-time employment. Currently, my focus is to pursue my dream of becoming a pediatric neurosurgeon. During my time at USC, I was heavily involved in neural stem cell research. When I was five years old, I witnessed the care and support that went into treating my sister for her malignant brain tumor. This is what ultimately inspired me to want to become a pediatric neurosurgeon and continue my stem cell research in medical school. I had the opportunity to travel abroad to Guatemala to be able to study the health inequities that people in Latin American countries face. This really hit close to home for me because my mother is actually from Guatemala. While visiting many of the rural communities, it was very unfortunate to see the discrimination that many of the indigenous people faced that barred them from accessing healthcare facilities. And so ultimately my hope is to be able to return to Guatemala and be able to provide my medical services to the rural community as a future physician. The USC Latino Alumni Association has provided me a tremendous amount of guidance and support. If it weren't for them, USC KDSAP would not have been possible as this is an organization that I co-founded with former LAA scholars, Jordan Juarez and Axel Hidalgo. I want to thank the Latino Alumni Association for the support that they have provided me in the past four years. I promise not to let this support go to waste and to accomplish my dreams of becoming a physician. What a wonderful story. The USC LAA scholarship has impacted the lives of over 9,000 scholars. Tonight, we want to highlight one of them. Many of you have met Juan Pablo Contreras, a USC LAA scholar who performed at our gala a few years ago. In 2016, he wrote his orchestral work at Maria Chitlan as a doctoral student at the USC Thornton School of Music. The piece went on to win the Jalisco Orchestra Composition Prize and was nominated for a Latin Grammy in the Best Arrangement category in 2019. More than 20 orchestras have performed Maria Chitlan, and Placido Domingo has recently named it the new Huapango. Let's hear from Juan Pablo himself about how the USC LAA scholarship has contributed to his success and more about Maria Chitlan. Hola a todos, I'm Juan Pablo Contreras. I'm a composer and conductor from Guadalajara, Jalisco, and I write classical music that celebrates Mexico, our cultures and traditions. Marechitlan was the first composition that I wrote as a USC student. I had just moved to Los Angeles after spending six years in New York, and I immediately felt welcomed by the school's wonderful Latino community. I was also very inspired by the incredible mariachis that I heard playing around town. So when I found out that my hometown orchestra, the Jalisco Philharmonic, was organizing a national competition for composers, I decided to write Mariachitlan, an orchestral work that recreates the experience of what it's like to visit a mariachi plaza, where you hear mariachi bands competing with each other, trying to win over the crowd, and sometimes even a policeman trying to stop the party and pay close attention to see if you can spot that policeman in the orchestra tonight. I was very fortunate to win this competition and even more lucky to have the Jalisco Philharmonic perform this piece in concert at USC where I actually met many of you and um, experienced for the first time how my music could bring our community together and make us feel proud of who we are. As a USC LAA scholar, I have had the opportunity to learn and be mentored by many of you who have supported my career and helped me achieve things that I could only dream of. For, for example, the recording project of Maria Chitlan, which became the first classical album to be released by Universal Music Mexico and earned me a Latin Grammy nomination is something that I was able to achieve in big part thanks to the USC LAA family. So I'm very honored to be here with you tonight and to introduce this video of Maria Chitlan, performed by the Jalisco Philharmonic with myself conducting at the Teatro de Goyado of Guadalajara. 
I hope you enjoy it. And thank you so much for supporting Latino students like me. That was amazing. I think you will agree that Juan Pablo is an exemplary USC LAA scholar. Congratulations to your Latin, for your Latin Grammy nomination, Juan Pablo, and much continued success to you. Un abrazo. The impact that the USC LAA makes each year is only, your, only possible thanks to your support. Year after year, our students make us proud and inspire us to create a new pathway for support such as our text to give campaign. We are excited to share this evening that thanks to USC trustee, Carmen Nava, her husband, Robert, and another anonymous donor, every dollar raised here tonight via the text to give campaign will be matched dollar for dollar for uh, up to $60,000. Now, how exciting is that? Uh, the funds raised will be used to fund scholarships and professional development programming for our students at USC. Your support is needed now more than ever. We, we invite you to give now and be part of supporting the Latino legacy at USC. Remember, your gift will have double the impacts at, as it, it will be matched dollar for dollar this evening. So grab your phones, all right? I'll give you a second. Grab your phone and simply text 41444 
and type SCLAA and click send. And then you will receive a donation link. Or for those of you with a program, we have made it even simpler. We uh, please turn to the inside back cover of your program and scan the QR code. This will automatically create a text message for you, which you can simply send with the information. So I'm going to give everyone another second to uh, set up their phones and set yourself up for this text to give campaign. We're, we really know and need your help to hit this number tonight. So looking forward to everyone's participation. Anything helps. Um, if you need help with the QR code or scanning the QR code or setting up your text to give, the ambassadors at your table will be able to assist you with that. Okay. So now here's the fun part. You can see the screen now. So when you donate, your name will appear on the screen and we will be checking in on the progress throughout the evening. Now it is time to meet our second Hubbard Award student finalist. So please join me in watching this video. I remember when I was younger, I told my dad I wanted to be a mechanic. And he tells me, I don't want you to work with your hands. I want you to think with your brain and think with your head, right? And then I remember my mom, on the other hand, she would tell me, hey, you know, I want to see you working at an office and a desk. And, you know, I don't want to see you working outside in the sun, like, you know, like we do. After high school, I applied to about 19 universities. Out of all 19, I only got into one. Um, and that was San Francisco State University. But for me, it just wasn't a good fit. I missed the streets that I walked through and my skateboard and all that good stuff. You know, uh, Bell Gardens has really, really created a niche in my heart, and, and I went back to community college. I've been involved in my community since I was 15. I served as a Recreation, Culture, and Youth Commission, and then later I served as the Planning Commissioner. And when I was at community college, I got involved with student government, and I was the student trustee, and I served on the Long Beach Board of Trustees, and I represented about 30,000 students on that board. Since day one, he has been very clear about his ambitions to represent his community. So he's always putting himself up for opportunities, volunteering his time, and willing to speak for his community and say, I'm here to listen to you and I will advocate for whatever your needs are. I figured public administration was the place to be. City management, that local government experience is really where you get that hands-on approach to dealing with constituent issues. For months, he has mentioned, I'm going to make a run for Bell Gardens City Council. And this year, in the middle of a global pandemic, he still said, I have to put myself out there. I care so much about my community. I need to pursue this because this is what I was meant to do. He organized, he knocked on doors, he let people know who he is, and it paid off. People heard him, they felt his energy and his commitment, and he got the votes and became the youngest city council member in the county at 23 years old. Still now today, people see me on my skateboard and they're like, hey, you're the guy that knocked on my door and vote, and, I, and you asked me, yeah, that's me. And you know, my three words that describe me are responsibility, integrity, transparency. You know, they saw the humbleness, they saw the realness. I think that's what really caught people to support me. I think that's what we need. We need hu humanity in these positions because oftentimes we lose sight of who we are. Luckily, now I am blessed to be in this opportunity to work in this environment that I wanted. Now I'm a city council member and I I'd eventually would like to work as a city manager and uh, see that other line of, of what goes into working at a city hall. He's an only child, you know, he's the dream of his parents. And for him, making the most of that dream, showing them that he is going to use every bit of energy that they've invested in him in reaching as high as he possibly can to do good things for the Latinx community in California. And I believe he'll make true on that promise. Wow, another phenomenal student. It is now my pleasure to welcome this evening's special guest, Dr. Carol L. Folt, who serves as the 12th president of the University of Southern California. She is a highly experienced leader, internationally recognized as a life scientist, and an award-winning teacher. Thank you for joining us this evening, President Folt. And thank you, so for that lovely introduction. What a beautiful night this is, and my congratulations to all of our honorees. I have a special privilege this evening. I'm here to talk about the Legacy Award honoree, Michael Felix. 
We have a video for you, but I'd like to say a few words first. And I want to begin with his heart. Michael Felix is kind and generous. If you ask anyone to describe him, these are among the first words you'll hear. And that's very true here at USC, where we've seen his generosity firsthand. Six years ago, when the Latino Alumni Association asked Michael to mentor a student, Michael said yes, immediately. That student now works at the Capital Group, where Michael built his own career. And that student still calls Michael his mentor. That's what it's all about, generosity born from compassion and a drive to ask, how can I help? Michael has that drive, and he has a deep compassion that has roots in his upbringing and his time at USC. When Michael first arrived on our campus in the late 1970s, it wasn't with a swagger or a sense of entitlement. Neither of his parents went to college. He grew up in Pico Rivera, just 20 minutes from campus. Michael recently told a story at an event he participated in for our first-gen students. He said that when his parents dropped him off, no one had even given thought to a meal plan, so Michael had to borrow money for his first dinner. But in high school, Michael had a teacher who saw his talent, Miss Lawrence, and she insisted that he apply to college. It was one of those life-changing influences, Michael later said, and I'm incredibly grateful. At USC, Michael worked 30 hours a week while earning his bachelor's degree in business administration at our USC Marshall School of Business. He recalls taking the bus home with his laundry while his roommates sped away in their sports cars. Those experiences motivated him, he said, but they also shaped him. They nurtured his capacity for compassion that we see today. And it's why he is so involved in our first gen programs now and has become a terrific role model for all of our students. But it isn't just our students who have benefited from this. While building his more than three decade career at the Capital Group, where he was global head of investment operations, Michael developed into a remarkable leader. And that leadership touches every corner of our campuses today. In 2009, Michael first started volunteering for the then Mexican American Alumni Association, which later became the Latino Alumni Association. In 2010, he joined its Corporate Advisory Council and eventually served as chair. And many of you have worked right alongside with him. In 2011, Michael joined our board of the School of Dramatic Arts and later served as chair. He was inspired, he said, by his oldest daughter, Taylor, who had taken dance classes at the school. Michael's wife, Debbie, now serves on the board for our Kaufman School of Dance. In 2013, Michael joined the USC Associates Board, on which he still serves today. And in 2015, he was elected to USC Alumni Association's Board of Governors, and in 2018, became first ever Latino president. When he concluded his tenure, he was then elected to the USC Board of Trustees. I think that really puts it all in perspective. Everything he does, he does so well that we just keep turning to him again and again, and he's always there for us. Michael's Catholic faith has always been his foundation, and he brings this passion to the Caruso Catholic Center's advisory board as well. When I go through this list, we get a sense of the scope of his service. We can see his influence, not just in how the university is growing and moving forward, but in how we care for one another, teach our students, and work together. For that, we could never find a better partner than Michael Felix. When Michael became a trustee, he reflected on how he first got involved at USC. It all began with volunteering right here for what is now the Latino Alumni Association. More than a decade ago, he was inspired by the realization that he had early in his career. It started to hit home just how important USC had been in transforming my life, he said. Michael, I hope you know how many lives at USC you have transformed. The USC Legacy Award is so well-deserved. 
So I want to just say congratulations. And now it says everything that Michael has asked his daughter to present this award to him. There is so much love in the Felix family. I see it whenever Michael and Debbie's children are around and their connections to USC run very deep. Debbie and Michael's daughter, Jordan, graduated from our School of Dramatic Arts in 2017. Their son, Austin, graduated from Dornsife last year. And they have another son, Brendan, who went to the University of Arizona. I mentioned their oldest daughter, Taylor McAllister, earlier in my remarks. She graduated from USC Annenberg in 2013 with a minor in business administration. And her husband, Andrew, graduated from our Price School the year before. During her time at USC, Taylor was captain of the USC Song Girls. She's now a digital reporter and host with Fox Sports West and Fox Sports San Diego and a member of USC Town and Gown. What a Trojan family. Taylor will present the video and the award to her father. Congratulations again, Michael, and thank you, Taylor, for joining us tonight. Right on. Good evening, family, friends, and fellow Trojans. Thank you so much for coming to celebrate the USC LAA and all the incredible honorees tonight. It is my extreme honor to present Michael Felix, my dad, with the Legacy Award. In the upcoming video, you will learn about my dad and why he is so deserving of this honor. But I want to take a moment to tell you about him in the way I know him best, Dad. I'm the oldest of the four kids in the big and crazy Felix family. That's why I believe I was chosen for this job to speak in front of all of you tonight. And while I was extremely nervous and terrified, if I can be completely honest, this is the biggest honor in the world. My dad has many accomplishments to his name that quite a few of you here tonight may already know, like retired senior vice president of investment operations at the Capital Group for 32 years, board member of the USC School of Dramatic Arts, former chairman of the board at USC Crusoe Catholic Center, board member of USC Latino Alumni Association, former first Latino president of the USC Alumni Association, and current member of the USC Board of Trustees. While most people would think that my dad would spend a lot of time away from family life because of his time commitment to all of his endeavors, that couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, I think I speak for all of my siblings when I say, we really didn't know my dad was involved in all of these things. Why? Because every night when my sister and I had shared a room, he slept at the foot of our bed until we fell asleep. And in the morning, he was round brushing our hair, yes, round brushing our hair before we went to school and he went to work. Because for never playing football in his life, he managed to learn the rules and plays of the game so that he could adequately give my brothers advice from the sideline during their games. Because he made it his mission to learn everything about the world of dance, which was a big part of my and my sister's life. For those of you that don't know, in dance we use a lot of French words, and my dad knew them all. And during our time as USC Song Girls, instead of tending to his duties as a contributor to this university, he was front row at all of our rallies before the game with a sweat rag and a cold water in hand. And while it's such a joy to share with all of you the incredible person my dad is, I know he is cringing right now because he hates when people show him praise. My dad is the most selfless and humble person that I have ever met. I remember when I was here at USC for school, I used to ask him why he spends so much time here when he can be relaxing, which is one thing he's not good at, just ask my mom. He would always simply say, the students need me. That's why he spends so much time involved in different parts of the university, because he knows that he can help make a difference in the students' lives. This life that my dad is living was not the life he was meant to live based on where he came from. It's because of his faith, humility, selflessness, and hard work that he is able to give inspiration to students that he feels were just like him 40 years ago. My dad's legacy is so much more than all of his accomplishments. His legacy is sacrificing to create a life for our family that we could have never dreamt of, and understanding that with all of our blessings comes great responsibility in him to inspire change and growth in the next generation of USC Latino students. I think success for Michael isn't where he succeeds personally. 
I think it's when he looks around and he can bring other people with him. My dad was born in Pico Rivera, California. He's the second oldest of five siblings. His dad worked for the city of LA as an electrician. His mom worked for Northrop. She was a secretary. We lived in the same city, probably 15 minutes apart. We both would see each other at mass on Sunday. He went to El Rancho High School. He was not thinking of college, only because he could not afford it. He had a really special teacher that said, you're going to college. He always talks about her. She was the one who actually encouraged him to go to USC. I think he really put his heart and soul in applying and knew that the only way to go to USC was to get the scholarship. He couldn't pay for school and he got a scholarship because of the Latino Alumni Association. He tells us a funny story of when my grandma came in begging for more money for him because he needed a place to live. He keeps God at the center of his compass. Just being a family-oriented man kind of carried him through those challenges and obstacles. Even today, he's still the same Catholic, family-oriented man. I think the reason why my dad spends so much time giving back to USC and the Latino Alumni Association and the Crusoe Catholic Center is because all that they did for him during his time here. And he wouldn't have been able to get the degree here at USC and then move on to Deloitte and Capital and give us the life that we live if it weren't for the Latino Alumni Association. So it's so important to him to come back to the kids who are now where he was so many years ago and try to influence them or encourage them and support them in any way that he can. For Michael, everything is about family. So I could see how the Trojan family and the Trojan Catholic family is important to Michael. One of the most powerful things that Michael can say to you is that you're family. When he says that, I, he means that, and you're a part of his family. And I don't look like a Felix, but I feel like one, so. <laughs> Michael's selection to be the president of the USC Alumni Association Board of Governors was a watershed moment. I think it was a big accomplishment for him to be the president of the Alumni Association and be the first Latino president. It was a big deal for him. He was being installed as president of the Board of Governors the week that the university was probably in some of its darkest hours. And to have somebody like him take charge at that point uh, of our Alumni Association Board and really be like the consummate and high profile leader of the Alumni Association was a blessing for the entire university and for the Trojan family. He's now a trustee of the university. The responsibilities that a trustee has, I think he was made for. It's a very tall responsibility. Michael's completely up for the task, and it gives the Alumni Association and our constituents you know, a great feeling knowing that Michael's representing the best interests of the alumni as he helps to shape the future of the university, especially during a time of uh, transition like we're still in. And it's rare that you find bridge builders like Michael, especially in, in leadership now. You know, he's been involved with USC Associates, he's been involved in the Alumni Association, he's been involved with the Latino Alumni Association, he's been involved with the School of Dramatic Arts, the Caruso Catholic Center, he's been a strong supporter for the athletics program here at USC, and he's a Marshall alum. He's touched so many different areas, and so his impact can be felt all over this campus. I'm really proud of him, especially for all his accomplishments and what he continues to do for us and also for the students here at USC. We need more examples in our world like Michael. I'm so proud of my dad and I'm so proud that he is my dad for so many reasons, but I think one of the biggest reasons is because he gives back and he gives of his time, not just to this university, but to any friends of ours that want his guidance or help, he gives back. He's so giving of himself, he is so selfless. And I think that's what I'm most proud of and that's what I look up to the most. That's how I try to live my life. He's really the love of my life. Thank you all so much for being here tonight, listening to every single person's story and allowing me the honor to introduce to all of you, my dad, Michael Felix, this year's USC LAA Legacy Award recipient.
Taylor, thank you so much for presenting me with this award. It is so sentimental to receive it from you, and I know you're representing our entire family with those overly kind and generous words. Good evening, everyone. It is so wonderful to finally be here with all of you to celebrate and support our LAA scholars. I could not be more moved to have all of you, my family and friends, share in this moment with me. And I'm sure, like all of you, I can't wait till we can connect again in person. I really missed all of you. President Bolt, I cannot express how much it means to this organization to have your presence and engagement here this evening. You have this very special way of making every person feel valued, feel recognized and appreciated, and feel that they belong. And tonight, you are sharing your authentically caring nature with every person in this virtual ballroom. And I am personally humbled and so grateful to you for bestowing this recognition. You are a very special leader and human being, and I am so blessed to serve as a trustee and alumni leader with you at the helm. Your leadership is this perfect balance of strategic vision, excellent execution, a culture of inclusivity, and the warmest heart, and always, always, always with students at the center. Thank you for your leadership, and thank you for being here with us. And wow, Father Richard and Patrick, what can I say? You two have been the best Trojan family partners I could ask for. Every interaction I have with you leaves me feeling inspired and like I truly matter, and like I even add value sometimes. But most importantly, you accept me and you appreciate me despite my shortcomings. I am truly grateful to you for enriching my USC journey. The truth is that there are so many others that are equally special to me, and I hope, I really hope you know who you are. We could have had a two hour video, but Mercy gave me very strict limits on the time. To my children, Taylor and Austin, whom you saw in the video, and Brendan and Jordan, who were not able to get the day off work, and my son-in-law Drew, and my son-in-law to be Nick, thank you for the love you give me every single day. Being your father and father-in-law is a most treasured gift that is the center of my life. And each of you are my greatest achievements. I am so proud of the human beings you are, and I thank God every day for giving you to me. And to my wife, Debbie, who absolutely, absolutely disdains public speaking and hates the camera, thank you for those beautiful and loving words and for being the love of a lifetime. You truly made me my best self, and I would not be half the person without your love, all of your encouragement, and your consistent belief in me. I treasure the family and friends we share, and I simply cannot imagine life without you. Perhaps, like some of you, after graduation, I began consumed with my career and later my family and disconnected from USC for a number of years. But it was this organization, the LAA, who reached out and brought me back almost 15 years ago. And my Trojan family just blossomed from there and today includes so many incredible organizations and people, like the Caruso Catholic Center, the USC Associates, the School of Dramatic Arts, the Coffin School of Dance, Athletics, the Band, the Song Girls, the USC Alumni Association, and the Board of Trustees. I have met hundreds of treasured friends and colleagues from these affiliations, and I cannot be more grateful for your friendship and love and allowing me to feel like I can make a small difference. We are all here this evening because we believe in the mission of the LAA, and we believe in the potential of Latinx youth, and we believe in the transformational impact a USC education has on one's life. Like many of you, I am proud to be a first-generation college student. And like many of you, I was a recipient of an LAA scholarship, and it made such a difference for my family and their ability to send me to USC. My USC education gave me so, so much. Certainly, it prepared me well for my professional career, but equally important, it completely expanded my understanding of what my life could be, and in the most profound way. Now, I will be honest, it was not easy and it generally did not always feel good observing how others more fortunate live. Hauling my dirty laundry and booked back to the bus stop to go home for the weekend and watching my classmates cruise by in their BMWs. But it opened my eyes and it made me hungry and it inspired in me a drive to work hard and believe in myself even when all I felt was doubt. I share these thoughts because I want you students to realize you are not alone. Most of you have a similar story, and every one of us in this virtual ballroom is here because of you. We believe in every single one of you, 
and we are here to help you in every way we can, whether it's prepping for an interview, or connecting you with potential employers, or simply being a mentor or a coach. We are here so you can lean on us and stand on our shoulders, just as we stood on the shoulders of those who came before us, like Raul Vargas, Drs. Edward and Richard Zapanta, George Pla, Art Garcia, Dominica Lynch, Manny Anguiano, David Lizalaga, USC President John Hubbard, and so many more, many of whom are joining us this evening. We are all beneficiaries of their voice, hard work, their tenacity and commitment, and their generosity. These founding leaders leaned in, pounded their fists on the table, and demanded more for our Latinx community, more scholarship funds, increased representation of Latinx students in the freshman class, more trustees of Latinx descent, and more Latinx leadership at all levels of the university, just to name a few items. And they were heard. The university instituted a two-for-one match for scholarship dollars raised. And this past year's freshman class increased Latinx representation from 14 to 17%. And the Board of Trustees has doubled the number of Latinx members. Again, just to name a few. We, as Trojan Latinos, have so much to be proud of and be grateful for because this university truly believes in the value and potential of us. USC is committed to, is invested in, and benefits from our community. Like the Leslie and William McMorrow Neighborhood Academic Initiative, this college prep program has matriculated over 1,000 youth from the surrounding community and boasts an 83% place, percent placement in four-year universities and 42% in USC alone. And La Casa, the student affairs organization focused on Latinx student advocacy and empowerment. Or Dean Guzman and the Gold School of Law and the work they do to support and provide to our DACA students. And trustee Oscar Munoz, co-chair of the board's finance committee. And trustee Carmen Nava, co-chair of the board's nominating and governance committee. These Latinx trustees are leading very critical and transformational pieces of work at the highest level. Like I said, we truly do have so much to be proud of and to be grateful for. Today, we live in times where being a person of color is valued and is important and differential. Diversity has never been more relevant in any other time in most of our lives. The long-standing pedigrees and requirements are being enhanced to make room for people of color at all levels and in every industry. So, students, I challenge you. This is your moment. Go for it. You have nothing to lose and so much to gain. You can change the paradigm for the next generation. Go out there and be the glue, be the integrator, be the change agent who brings all people together and unites all colors, all orientations, and all conditions. Do not stay in your safe zones. Get dirty, get uncomfortable, straddle boundaries, and create progressive and transformational change. Again, this is why we are all here. We believe in you and we need you to go out there and conquer. So, congratulations to all of our scholars and the Hubbard Award finalists. You inspire us to do what we do, and we are all so completely proud of you and what you have accomplished and what you will achieve. I can't wait to learn of the next chapters of your life stories. Carmen Herrera, I wanna thank you for nominating me for this honor. Mercy, Dolores, Vivian, and Isabel, we cannot say thank you enough for what you do and accomplish every single day. And to all of you, the wide, broad, LAA Trojan family, I share this with you, and we are truly grateful for everything you do. I am proud to be Latino, and I'm grateful to be a Trojan, but most importantly, I am truly humbled to be standing here this evening. I am grateful to my wife and children for supporting me and my all things USC endeavors, it truly is a gift to integrate my personal family with my Trojan family. Lastly, I would like to dedicate this award to my parents, Miguel and Anita Felix. Were it not for their unwavering love, support, and belief in me and my four siblings, I would not be standing here. I love you both so much. Once again, thank you from the bottom of my heart, and always, 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 five on. That's right. Thank you for those inspiring words, uh, Michael, and congratulations again. Um, and thank you, President Folt, for being with us this evening. All right, let's check in on our text to donate and see how we're doing uh, this evening. 
So I see that most of you have figured out the app. So I really want to thank you all this evening. Uh, Ron, Carolina, I see some names here, some familiar names. Uh, John, Lydia, help us uh, get us to the 60,000 this night. I know we can do it. Uh, we're counting on every single one of you. Any amount helps. Maricela, thank you very much. Edith, Grace, Rob, Miss, Richard Vargas, I appreciate it. Uh, Carmen, thank you very much. Let's keep it going. Let's break this thermometer tonight. Uh, every dollar will be matched up to $60,000. I know we can do it. I believe in the power of the Trojan family. So let's get us to that number tonight. And if you already donated, thank you very much. And if you haven't, uh, help us get to that 60,000 goal. I know we can do it. So now let's meet our third Hubbard Award student finalist. I was raised in the child welfare system. I was exposed to several forms of abuse, physical and sexual exploitation. I was beaten, stabbed, raped. I lived in a lot of different group homes, including incarcerated high school facilities and juvenile hall. So it was a daily struggle um, to just survive and I was then aged out of the system at 18. And within a week, I was homeless and living on the streets of Los Angeles. I was living in Lake Elsinore, California in a homeless tent community. And I found out I was pregnant and I was determined to give my son a better life. I moved to the small trailer in the back of somebody's home, and I ended up growing a relationship with them and figuring out how to live and how to be happy. After reuniting with my biological family, I was encouraged to go back to school. I then was introduced and connected to two other children who were former foster youth, single mothers, and advocates within their community. I had never seen young women like me making real impact on their communities. That day forward, I told myself I was no longer gonna put barriers on myself. You know, she's faced a lot of difficulties in her life and she has chosen to say, I'm gonna learn from this and move forward. I'm gonna take this tragedy or trauma and turn it into a success. I'm going to use what I've learned to help other people. The Board of State Community Corrections is in charge of overseeing allocations of state funds. I saw the need for representation on the board. These board members are predominantly judges and lawyers, and I didn't see anybody like me that came from these backgrounds. And so I wrote letters to the board and advocated and after a year and a half, I got a call from the Board of State. And I was the first to be a California youth representative for all at-risk youth in California. I was able to have a seat at the table and to work alongside those decision makers and stakeholders. It was important for me to use my voice to advocate for my communities because not everyone has made it out like me. To be in a degree program, to be raising a son, that already takes an amazing amount of energy. So to also be involved in policy actions, to sit on multiple boards, to give her time to train others, that's the best of Trojans. That's the best of our students. And it's so impressive. Wow, there you have it. We have now had the opportunity to meet the three finalists for this year's Hubbard Award. They are undeniably a great representation of the caliber of Latino students at USC. It is now my pleasure to introduce this year's chair of the Hubbard Award Committee, Maria Sechris, who will announce the winner of the award for this year. Good evening, everyone. In 1973, Eight Mexican-American alumni accompanied by Raul Vargas, the executive director of the MAAA, paid a visit to, vis to John Hubbard. They requested tuition assistance and an increase in the number of Latino students admitted to USC. 
Dr. Hubbard challenged them to increase fundraising efforts and graciously offered a unique two to one matching program. One of those alumni was Dr. Richard Zapanta, whom we lost at the end of 2019. He enjoyed chairing the Hubbard Award Committee and learning about each applicant's unique life story. Let's take a moment to watch this tribute video to Dr. Zapanta and reflect upon his great contributions to the LAA. Richard is a, a philanthropist, an art expert, and a generous person that makes our community proud and, and better and stronger. Born and raised in East Los Angeles, young Richard Zapanta was told by a high school guidance counselor he'd make a good auto mechanic. His mother, who completed high school as a 40-year-old adult, refused to let him be discouraged. She and her son Richard both graduated from East Los Angeles College at the same time. Richard earned his bachelor's degree in psychology from USC in 1968, his MD from USC's Keck School of Medicine in 1973, and completed his internship and residency at LAC USC Medical Center. Having begun his studies as one of only four Latinos in his class, he began banging on doors of medical school deans in order to open doors for more Latino students. In 1973, Dr. Zapanta, in collaboration with his brother, Dr. Edward Zapanta, Raul Vargas, and six other committed Latinos, founded the USC Mexican American Alumni Association, later renamed the USC Latino Alumni Association to better reflect the association's commitment to all Latino students. For many years, the chairman of the Dr. John R. Hubbard Recognition Award Committee, Dr. Zapanta saw the Latino Alumni Association award over $20 million, providing more than 8,800 scholarships to USC students. 8,800 open doors. Richard Zapanta might have made a good mechanic. He certainly made a fine man of the people. For me personally, one of my proudest accomplishments is being a founding member of this phenomenal visionary organization. Knowing that I have played a small role in supporting and nurturing the education of our Latino students has not just been a privilege, it has truly been an honor, especially seeing the results of these efforts as exemplified by so many successful stories. His extraordinary spirit remains with us and continues to inspire us. His extraordinary family we embrace as our own, and we celebrate their continued commitment to Dr. Zapanta's vision of opening doors for all Latinos. Si se puede. We miss you, Dr. Z. The Dr. John R. Hubbard Award is presented each year to a graduating Latino student who has displayed outstanding academic and civic achievements. Last year, we unfortunately had to postpone our gala. So it's my delight to recognize our 2020 Hubbard Award honoree, Maria del Pilar Morales. Congratulations, Maria. It is also my pleasure as chairperson of the Hubbard Selection Committee and on behalf of the USC Latino Alumni Association to present this year's award to Jorge Campos Franco. Congratulations, Jorge. Good evening. I am incredibly humbled to be recognized as this year's recipient of the Dr. John R. Hubbard Award. I'd like to congratulate the other Hubbard finalists and Legacy Award honoree, Michael Felix. I'd like to thank tonight's presenting sponsors, Entrevision and KXLA, as well as all of you here for supporting the USC Latino Alumni Association and scholars like myself. My profound interest in the medical field first sparked when my sister Elisa was diagnosed with a malignant brain tumor 
at the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles. As anyone could imagine, this diagnosis was difficult for my family to accept. I was only five years old and too young and naive to understand the true severity of Elisa's diagnosis. This allowed me to look past the intimidating hospital setting and become curious about the life-saving craftsmanship of Elisa's clinicians. Over the course of 11 months, as Elisa underwent treatment, physicians like Dr. Mark Krieger would answer all my innocent questions and dispel my family's hopelessness and despair. Not only did these clinicians save my sister's life, but they inspired me to want to become a physician myself. I wanted to one day emulate the care and support that they provided to my family. As a first generation Latino student, receiving a full tuition merit scholarship as a trustee scholar and a Latino Alumni Association scholarship made attending USC possible. And this has truly changed the trajectory of my life and the lives of my family and community. During my first semester at USC, I volunteered as a Spanish interpreter at the University Eye Center, for which I received the USC Spanish and Portuguese Community Service Award. I recall the many sighs of relief that I would receive as I entered the examination room informing patients that I was going to translate. These sighs of relief are indicative of the language and educational barriers that make healthcare difficult to navigate for members in the Latino community. This experience ultimately led me to co-found the Kinney Disease Screening and Awareness Program at USC, KDSAP for short. For the past three years, KDSAP has educated hundreds of families about the prevention of non-communicable diseases like diabetes, hypertension, and chronic kidney disease in collaboration with the Neighborhood Academic Initiative Program and the Wellness Center at LA County's USC Medical Center. We have empowered Latino families with a voice, providing them resources such as food vouchers, nutrition courses, and access to free clinics to help them overcome the health disparities that they face. In addition to empowering the Latino community, I have conducted groundbreaking research at USC's Center for Regenerative Medicine and Stem Cell Research, investigating the process of adult mammalian hippocampal neurogenesis under the guidance of Dr. Michael Bonaguidi. As a former Rose Hills Research Fellow, I was given the opportunity to conduct my own research project in which I set out to discover data that could help the scientific community determine which distinct pattern of differentiation neural stem cells follow. To do so, I conducted an analysis on seven-day postnatal mice, a feat that had yet to be accomplished in my lab due to the fragility of such underdeveloped brain tissue. Nevertheless, I persevered and uncovered potential evidence that points to a sequential model of development for mammalian hippocampal neurogenesis. Although the COVID-19 pandemic cut my research short, I am determined to continue this work in medical school in hopes of contributing to the development of therapies that can counteract cognitive decline and neurodegenerative diseases like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's disease. What began as a seed of curiosity during my time at the Children's Hospital has since then blossomed into a commitment to the betterment of patient lives and the empowerment of the Latino community. My experiences and the impact that I have had in my community would not have been possible without the financial support that I have received from the LAA and USC. The LAA and USC have enabled me to invest all my time and efforts into the opportunities that I had interning at Kaiser Permanente, studying abroad in Guatemala, and serving as president of my fraternity, La Unidad Latina, while maintaining a 3.97 GPA as a human biology major. My drive and my unique experiences as a child of Guatemalan and Mexican immigrants will help me become an empathetic Spanish-speaking physician that the Latino community so desperately needs. Upon graduating from USC, I will be applying to medical school and pursuing my dream of becoming a pediatric neurosurgeon. I want to thank my mother and father who have always supported me and my academic endeavors. It is ultimately their sacrifices and hard work 
that have put me in this position here today. Mamá, papá, gracias por todo lo que hacen por mí y por nuestra familia. I'd also like to thank my professor, Dr. Lorraine Turcott, who has shown me a tremendous amount of support during my academic studies. Once again, thank you for this recognition and to all of you here for supporting scholars like myself. Your support has had a major impact in my academic endeavors and my efforts to better the health and well being of Latinos in the Los Angeles community. Enjoy the rest of your evening and fight on. Congratulations, Jorge, and congratulations to the other finalists as well. You all make the Trojan family very proud. So let's check in uh, and see how we're doing with our text to donate campaign and see if we broke the, uh, have broken the uh, thermometer. We were about 50% last time. We just got over that hump. I wanna thank you, every single one of you who has text, uh, text and your donations. Fatima, Janelle, Jim, Donald, Raul, Jacqueline, Tracy. Uh, challenge the people at, at your home, whoever's with you, challenge them, see who else could donate. Text your friends that are participating tonight. Challenge them to see if they can give as well. Challenge each other. Let's challenge each other and break this uh, thermometer tonight. It is a great cause, and we could continue to support uh, students such as Jorge, students such as our Hubbard finalists, students as uh, yeah, uh, Juan Pablo Contreras. Thank you very much. Uh, Brian, Carla, let's see who else is in here. Gary, Perez, Dina, Edward Padilla. Ron again, here we go. So thank you very much, Teresa. So thank you, every single one of you who are texting to donate, uh, texting, texting in your donations. We really appreciate it. You heard just some of the brief stories of what this, uh, what these funds goes towards. We are making a, a difference in the community and changing people's lives. What an impact we're making in the world by your support. Truly, truly appreciate it. Um, I know it's possible. I know we can get back to our $60,000 uh, goal. I know we could break that. So help us continue supporting all these students and contribute what you can. Uh, the text to donate uh, will be open all night. And thank you all for your amazing generosity. We're getting close to the end now. And, and it is my pleasure uh, to let you know that it has been an honor uh, for me to uh, be with you this evening as your master of ceremony for this outstanding event, an event that's changing people's lives, students' lives, future Trojans that are gonna go out to the world to do an amazing thing, as you will hear here tonight. Um, for now, uh, but for now, I want to welcome to the virtual stage, the executive director of the USC LAA, Mercy Willard. Thank you, Saul. Wow, what a night, right? I'd like to once again congratulate Michael Felix and the 2020 Hubbard Award winner, Maria del Pilar Morales and Jorge Campos Franco. Very well-deserved recognitions. I'm sure you will agree with me. As you have seen throughout this evening, you make an impact. Your participation, your donations, your support makes an impact. It allows our students to impact the future of health, music, and, a, and policy, amongst many other things. I'd like to thank Saul Alvarado for being an incredible gala chair and our master of ceremony this evening. We have sent you a small token of our appreciation to your home, and I have to say you will always be our reigning thank champ you. as the gala thank chair you. for two years in a row due to having to postpone the event. I would also like to thank my team, my small and mighty team of mujeres, Isabel Aranda, Dolores Otelo, and Vivian Sampson for their tireless work behind the scenes to make tonight and all the other things that we do possible. If you are joining us live on the Six Connects platform, the evening is not yet over. We invite you to join us for dancing with DJ Herrick, the DJ that we've had the past couple of years, by returning to the Six Connects lobby and clicking on the post gala reception link. But first, to officially close our program, Please welcome back the USC Trojan Marching Band. Once again, thank you and fight on. Fight on.